Hey folks, today I wanted to talk to you about Ridley Scott and his brand new film, Napoleon. There has been a lot of buzz around this film because it is starring McKean Phoenix, who is an acclaimed actor, and it is, of course, directed by Ridley Scott, who has done other hit films such as Alien, Blade Runner, and Gladiator. Some of that buzz is surrounding Scott's attention to historical detail and how he has been throwing shade towards historians, and that unsurprisingly made my ears perk up. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Before we continue, my name is Christia, and on this channel I talk about museums and history, and if you're into either of those things, consider sticking around. Full disclosure, I have not seen Napoleon. I saw a trailer a few months ago and it looked like a gritty biopic, and I'm not really into biopics in the first place, and I was a little bit thrown off by the fact that there were a lot of British accents for a movie about a French guy, but it wasn't my cup of tea. I forgot about this film until it was released a little while back, and I've been hearing some pretty mixed things about it. But of the things that I was hearing, I did notice a recurring theme where Ridley Scott was acting very aggressive and vitriolic towards anyone who was pointing out historical inaccuracies in his film. And we're going to break that down, but before I do, I just want to offer a little bit of a disclaimer. I feel like there is a lot of this perceived pressure that a piece of media depicting a historical figure has to be incredibly historically accurate, especially with the rise of bastard historians like myself who poke holes in things on the internet. But for me personally, I don't think that a historical figure or event needs to be portrayed on screen 100% accurately in order to tell a compelling story. However, there are definitely certain figures and events that should be handled with extreme care, caution, and consultation. One of my favorite pieces of media lately has been a little TV show called Our Flag Means Death, which just released its second season, and it follows the exploits of real historical pirates Steed Bonnet and Blackbeard, otherwise known as Edward Teach, and this show is not historically accurate at all. Like, the writers did get some things right because there were things that happened in Bonnet's and Teach's real lives that can be turned into plot points, which in turn help to tell a really compelling story. But historical inaccuracy abounds. The writers took a look at these historical figures, decided that they wanted to put them in situations, and boy am I glad that they did. Ridley Scott has not taken the same approach with Napoleon, nor with his previous historical films like Gladiator. I am not a Napoleonic historian, I don't know very much about the guy, but there have been a lot of people online pointing out that this film is very historically inaccurate. Which, again, is not a big deal if you're just trying to tell a decent story and are being upfront about the fact that it's not historically accurate. The problem is, is that Ridley Scott has stated that he wanted to tell the true story of Napoleon and really get to the heart of this historical figure. And you can't do that if you are intentionally misrepresenting the historical record. According to a New Yorker article, Scott isn't big on biographies and gave up on reading two or three on Napoleon. But he was apparently observed poring over an Oxford Napoleon scholar's map like a hardened general preparing for battle, and how he and Joaquin Phoenix spent 12-hour days psychoanalyzing the Emperor, scene by scene. I started to think like Napoleon. I started to think like Napoleon. Did you? Did you? Another article I saw was an interview with Scott, and it had a quote from the interview as the title, which read, I didn't need historians to make my Napoleon epic. And, you know, the Rotten Tomato scores say otherwise, but I don't entirely disagree with this statement. You can make up a whole bunch of shit about a historical figure and make it epic. You're absolutely right, Ridley Scott. I'm just not convinced that you succeeded, though. But then I saw this quote. When Scott has issues with historians, he says to them, Excuse me, mate, were you there? No? Well, shut the fuck up, then. First, first of all, extremely unnecessarily rude. And if your first response to criticism, which was offered in good faith, by the way, is to tell that person to shut up, then that does not make you look like a good guy. 
That makes that criticism perhaps look even more accurate, more valid. Second of all, fuck you, Ridley Scott. Way to discredit an entire field of study so you can wax poetic about the emotion behind Napoleon. Shut up, dude. You weren't there either and you still made a critically mid movie about it. According to the New Yorker article that I keep mentioning in this video, a Napoleonic scholar named Michael Brewers was invited to Ridley Scott's office to discuss this upcoming epic. It isn't clear if the consultation went beyond this office meeting, but Michael spoke highly of Scott and his work at the time. I would like to point out that this discussion mentioned in the New Yorker article was published on November 6th, and the film wouldn't be released until November 22nd. I would love to hear what Michael thinks of this film now that it is released. But then again, Ridley Scott hired a historical consultant on Gladiator, a woman by the name of Kathleen Coleman. And he went on to ignore pretty much all of her suggestions and advice. Coleman was supposedly so dismayed and disappointed in the final cut of the film that she actually asked for her credit to be removed from the film on its release. There is a widely held belief that historical consultants are hired on to these films in order to give them the illusion of respectability. By hiring a historical consultant like this, the audience will then assume that the material that they are consuming on screen is historically accurate, when, as we have seen, that is often not the case. Honestly, the more I read about this whole debacle, the angrier it made me. Ridley Scott dismisses constructive criticism of historians while banking on historical accuracy to make his epic film. And I just don't understand why he's being so aggressive towards people that generally mean well. I found a quote from Robert Rosenstone, who is an American historian who has talked about the relationship between film and history, and he noted, a century after the invention of motion pictures, the visual media have become arguably the chief carrier of historical messages in our time. I consider myself a public historian, which basically means that I like to share history with the public. I like to adapt history for public consumption. I like to teach history through tours, through presentations, museum exhibits, and arguably through this YouTube channel as well. Film is a wonderful way to connect people with history, to connect people with the life and times of Napoleon and the time period of when he was alive. This is just an assumption on my part, but I imagine that there are a lot of biographies of Napoleon flying off of bookshelves right now because of this film, which is great. But it sucks that people who walk out of the theater who took this film at face value are going to have a very skewed and incorrect perspective on this historical figure and period of time. Ridley Scott has been outright aggressive towards these historical perspectives to such a degree that when there was one historian on TikTok who was poking holes in the historical accuracy of Napoleon's trailer, Ridley Scott responded with, quote, get a life. History is their job, you moron. And I do find this troubling because it just adds fuel to the fire of this recent bout of academia that we've seen a major spike in in the last couple of years. I can point to dozens of examples of people claiming that history is a hoax. That atrocity that occurred, psh, that's just historians lying to us. And it might seem like a bit of a stretch to compare that to a big Napoleon film that's come out, but this was a big film. The trailer was viewed 20 million times, and this will affect how people interpret and share history. This will have consequences. But I just wanted to get my two cents out there, share my opinion on this, because I haven't seen anybody else talk about it, and uh, I think that it's important that we talk about this. If you are a Napoleonic historian, I stand with you and I'm sorry. <laughs> Please feel free to share any recommended readings or documentaries or better films or media adaptions of Napoleon and his life in the comments. But for everyone else, have you seen Napoleon? What did you think? Have you seen these articles? Or is this the first time that you're hearing of Ridley Scott spewing trash? But with all of that being said, I hope that you have a wonderful day or evening, wherever you are, and I will see you next time. <laughs>